Hello and welcome to a Digital Media Academy how-to on basic editing and exporting of your photos using Adobe Lightroom 5. My name is Kenneth Chan and I'm a lead instructor and curriculum developer for the teen photography courses at Digital Media Academy. I am also a photography instructor at Eastern Arizona College and the owner of Kenneth Chan Photography. I've been using Adobe Lightroom since version 1 and use it to apply basic edits to all of my DSLR photos. In this how-to, we will cover my typical photographer's editing workflow in Lightroom, including how to adjust the basic attributes of an image, use batch processing to save you time, apply editing presets, and export your images. Here are the software and tools you will need before we get started. To purchase or try Adobe Lightroom, go to www.adobe.com Lightroom. Let's get started. This is what the Adobe Lightroom 5 icon looks like, and I'm going to launch it now. It will open up to the last folder I was working in. In our previous video, we imported and rated some photos, so now I'm going to start editing an image by selecting it and clicking into the Develop module. Here's how the Develop panel is laid out. At the top is the histogram to help you get a sense of the range of tonal values in your image. The graph will lean toward the left for darker images and toward the right for brighter images. Histograms are a good way to see if your highlights or shadow details are getting cut off. If you click to activate the triangles, you can see those problem areas highlighted in bright red and blue. From the histogram display, you can directly adjust the settings for the blacks, shadows, exposure, highlights, and whites. There isn't always a correct exposure for a particular image, so you can set it according to your personal taste. However, for most of my photo edits, I like to calibrate my images against the reference image, since our eyes can sometimes adapt too easily and we may have a hard time knowing whether an image is truly bright or dark enough unless we can compare it to something else. This is also a good time to be aware of the before and after toggle button in the develop mode, which is the backslash key, which is to the right of the square brackets on most keyboards. You use this to get an idea of how much you've modified the image from the original. If you like, you can also keep the before and after images up at the same time by clicking the view menu, before and after, and then selecting one of the split screen options. Moving on, below the histogram, you have six important editing tools. Crop, Spot Removal, Red Eye Removal, Graduated Filter, Radial Filter, and the Adjustment Brush. We will come back and talk about each of these in a bit. Next, you have the basic adjustments, including white balance presets, a color temperature slider, and a color tint slider. You can even click the eyedropper tool and select a neutral pixel area in your image to set your white balance. Of course, if you don't get the results you want, you can undo it and just try it again. Below the white balance control is the tone control. It's broken up into exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. You may have already adjusted some of these through the histogram. After the tone section is the presence section, where you can adjust the clarity, vibrance, and saturation. I hardly ever pump up the saturation anymore and use the vibrance slider instead. Once you get the hang of adjusting sliders, you will want to go ahead and explore the rest of the adjustments in the develop module, such as the tone curve, hue saturation lightness, split toning or dual tone, sharpening, noise reduction, lens corrections, vignetting and grain effects, and camera calibration. And oh yes, if you really make a mess with your editing and just want to start over, you can click the reset button. As a quick aside, if you go back to the library module by hitting the G key, you'll notice that some of these basic editing functions are also located here under Quick Develop. Instead of using sliders, you'll click the buttons to make edits in small and large increments. Okay, let's go back to the develop module by hitting the D key. Let's talk about the main tools that you get in addition to the sliders. This is the crop and straighten tool, which will give you an overlay that you can use to adjust the rotation of the image and decide what parts to keep or cut off. 
You can rotate the image by hovering just outside the corners of the crop box and then clicking and dragging the image. Use the grid lines to line up things like the horizon or lines that are supposed to be vertical. Aspect ratio is the proportion of width to height and I often want to lock it to a specific ratio either to keep it the same as my camera which is 3 by 2 or I can lock it to match my desired output which may be 5 by 7 or 8 by 10 if I was going to make a print. That way I can see what it will look like at the end and make sure I didn't cut off anything important. Next is the spot removal tool which is good for cleaning up your image by brushing out flaws. In addition to using the slider, you can use the square bracket keys to change the size of the brush. Now click on something in the image that you want to remove and Lightroom will do its best to figure out the context and see if it can replace it with something better. Sometimes it does a great job and other times you have to help it out by adjusting where it's drawing its source from. Also, you'll want to think about whether to use the clone mode or heal mode. Clone mode is good for copying pixels straight from the source to the destination. Heal mode will try to only copy the texture it sees at the source. You can change the size of the brush by clicking and dragging the border as well. Finally, in Lightroom 5, you can actually draw paint strokes in addition to just circles, which is great for removing things like lampposts. The next three tools are related, and they all relate to applying some kind of general image adjustments selectively. So they are great for making just part of an image brighter or darker, or part of an image more vibrant or black and white. Let's go ahead and start with the last tool, which is the adjustment brush, or keyboard shortcut K. Even if you're not new to Lightroom, sometimes it can be confusing whether you're looking at the regular basic edit panel, which affects the whole image, or the adjustment brush panel, which will only affect the parts you paint over. Here you can decide what you want to do to modify part of the image. You can also combine any of the adjustments together. You can also again adjust the size of the brush with the square bracket keys. The first time you click on your image with an adjustment brush, you will define the control point. If you have well-defined edges and you want Lightroom to try to stay within the lines, activate the auto mask checkbox before you start painting. If later you decide you don't want a selective adjustment anymore, you can just click the control point and hit delete. You can also add to the brush stroke by clicking on the control point first, then brushing on additional parts of the image. Finally, if you want to get rid of a little bit of the adjustment area, you can select the erase mode of the adjustment brush and remove the parts you don't want anymore. Now that you have the hang of the adjustment brush, you can see that the graduated filter and the radial filter are mostly just specialized versions of that. The graduated filter is great for adding a whole line or sheet of an adjustment, such as deepening the color of the sky without affecting the rest of the image. The radial filter can help to quickly generate a circular or elliptical effect, which can be useful for creating a spotlight effect. A lot of times I'll have a lot of the same subject in the same environment for a bunch of shots in an album and I'll naturally want them all to be edited the same way. There are multiple methods to copy or develop adjustments from one photo to the next, so I'll show you some ways to do it using the copy command. What Lightroom is going to copy are the adjustment values and first you have to select which attributes to copy in the dialog box. Then you click OK Select the image where you want to apply the edits and paste the values. As a quick shortcut, if you just want to copy everything you did to the previous photo, just click the convenient previous button to copy those settings over. If you find yourself applying the same recipe in your photo editing to achieve one of your favorite looks, you can save it as a develop preset by clicking develop menu, new preset. Once again, it will ask you to confirm which attributes from the current photo should be saved as part of the preset. You also want to name it something that will help you remember what it does or the effect it should have on an image. Did you notice that Lightroom already ships with a huge supply of built-in presets? Try them out to get an idea of what they do. You never know when a particular effect might come in handy. Now I'm going to show you how to save out your photos so you can use them outside of Lightroom. You can export any number of photos as a batch with the same export settings so long as you have them all selected at once, 
in the library module. This is another time when using search filters can be helpful in narrowing down your photos. If you've been using the star ratings, flags, or color labels, you can now filter by those. You can also filter by keywords or metadata attributes, such as what lens or camera you shot the photos with. If that's not flexible enough, you can also create collections. A popular way to use these is to create a portfolio or best of collection. You can also create smart collections based on rules that specify how Lightroom can find the images you need. For example, they all have five stars, the keyword best, or the red label. Once you have the photo selected, click File Menu, Export. Now you'll specify where to export your image files, any special way you want to name them, and the quality and size settings that you want. You can also have it apply a watermark to every image during the export phase. When you're ready, click the Export button. You can even get back to work while Lightroom completes your export in the background. So that was a demo of the editing and exporting phases in Lightroom, but there is so much more that you can do with this. To learn more about digital photography and editing, check out the Digital Photography Classes by Digital Media Academy at www.digitalmediaacademy.org.